Hello everyone. Welcome to Dr. Rajkumar Academy for Civil Services. Let us discuss today the Hindu newspaper of Delhi edition. The first article of the day that we are going to discuss about. After Bihar, Odisha begins survey of OBC caste. See the Odisha government started survey of people from the OBC community belonging to around 210 caste. In the state to determine their social and educational status which was said by the officials from the government of Odisha. After this particular caste census, particularly the survey related to the caste, the second state that is Odisha following by Bihar. So we need to understand here about the importance of the census. The origin of the census in India goes back to the colonial exercise of 1881. It is about the delimitation exercise. To capture the Indian population and access resources and map social changes. However, as early as 1940s, 1941 census has pointed out the census is a large, immensely powerful but blunt instrument unsuited for specialized inquiry. So, we need to understand here about the social, economic, and caste census. Remember, this social economic caste census was conducted for the first time in the year of 1931, which is meant uh, to evaluate the economic status, allowing the central and state authorities to come up with a range of indicators of deprivations and combinations of which could be used by each authority. So, if you take the mapping of inequalities at a broader level, this SECC helps, that is socio-economic and caste census. In terms of doing the caste census, we need to understand the significance. One is about benefit in policy making. See, the purpose of a caste census is not graded to the reservation issue. It is about the policy maker. See, when the policy makers come to know about the importance of the caste and it is develop, it is better to develop a great policies and also they can come up with the implementation strategies as well. So, reveal privileged section of a society. Caste is not only a source of disadvantage. It is also very important to the country to know about the source of privilege and advantage in our society. And caste has an important position in Indian society as well. So, to address all the prevalent inequalities, unequal distribution of wealth, resources, education has been to acute shortage of purchasing power. These are all the major significance that you need to understand related to the caste census. In this particular article, Odisha began survey of OBC caste followed by the state Bihar as well. The next article of the day. Supreme Court, it can end, wait for consensual divorce. Consensual divorce. See, the Supreme Court held that its extraordinary discretionary power under Article 142 of the Indian Constitution that can be used to do complete justice for the couples who trapped in bitter marriages by granting them divorce by mutual consent sparing them the misery of waiting for 6 to 18 months for a local court to declare the annulment final. Remember, this is not applicable for all the cases. This is only for the few cases, the transfer of petitions or appeals in the civil or criminal matrimonial disputes. In terms of two major things that is irretrievable and inevitable and the damage is irreparable. In these cases, Supreme Court can enjoy the power of the discretionary Article 142 of the Constitution to grant divorce. So, we need to know the background here about Section 10A of the Divorce Act of 1869. 1869. This particular act mandated a one-year wait from the marriage date to file the plea. It requires the couple 
to be separated for at least two years. The couple needed to provide that they have not been living as husband and wife during this particular period. So, taking this prolonged period, which not fair in terms of the inevitable cases. So, the circumstance that the file, you know, the file transfer to the higher court appeals in civil or criminal matrimonial disputes. In these scenarios, there was a discretionary power can be used by the Supreme Court under Article 142 of the Constitution to grant the divorce. This is the exact context of this particular article. Moving towards the next important topic. It is a small information that we need to gather related to the Pobitiro, Pobitiro Wildlife Sanctuary. A one horned reno and a water buffalo with their calves at Pobitoro Wildlife Sanctuary. So, this particular sanctuary has the highest density of one horned renos in the world and the second highest concentration in Assam after the Kaziranga National Park. And this particular sanctuary is also known as Mini Kaziranga due to the same landscape, similar landscape under the vegetation. The wildlife sanctuary is, is home to endangered one-horned rhinoceros and other mammals such as leopard, fishing cat, jungle cat, feral buffalo, wild pigs, Chinese pangolins. About 72% of Pobitoro sanctuary consists of wet savanna. So, we need to understand about this particular sanctuary located in the state of Assam and they are talking about one on rhinoceros. Already we discussed about this and another species which is known as Asiatic water buffalo. Scientifically known as Bubales arni is known to be found in the central Indian forest and is mostly restricted to the states of Assam, Arunachal Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. So the protection status as per uh, IUCN, it comes under endangered species. And Wildlife Protection Act 1972, it comes under Schedule 1. So wild buffalo is believed to be extinct in Bangladesh, Peninsular, Malaysia and on the island of Sumatra, Java. These are all the information that you need to gather related to the Pobitoro Wildlife Sanctuary in Morigon district of Assam. The next topic it is about acts of missionaries to spread Christianity not illegal. Tamil Nadu, like in Tamil Nadu to Supreme Court. What exactly this article is stating about related to the freedom of religion. Remember, the acts of missionaries to spread Christianity in themselves, which is inside of the particular group. seen it, it cannot be seen as illegal the Tamil Nadu government has told the Supreme Court in this particular article that we need to understand the importance of right to freedom of religion article 25 of the Indian Constitution which provides the provision of freedom of conscience and free profession Practice and propagation of religion. So, the fundamental rights enshrined under Article 25 of the Constitution says that all persons are equally entitled to freedom of religion, particularly conscience and right to freely profess. Practice and propagate the religion, which means freedom of conscience, right to profess, right to practice right to propagate. So, this particular article 25 covers the religious beliefs that is doctrine of any religious as well as religious practices such which is known as rituals. So, moreover these rights are available to all persons which means citizens as well as non-citizens. But these rights are subject to public order, morality, health 
which means restrictions the state is permitted to regulate or restricted any economical political or other secular activity associated with the religious practice so article 25 in detail that you need to understand here and this article is stating about the act of missionaries to spread Christianity in themselves. So the group of Christianity, if they are doing any act to spread their religious, cannot be seen as illegal and it is not going to be come under the article 25, which means they are like not following the provisions. In terms of compulsion, intimidation, threats, allurement, superstitious or black magic, through this way, if people are like forcing towards to make sure this should not happen. These are all the importance that we need to understand under this particular article. Melanistic tiger dies in Similipal Tiger Reserve. Here you need to know about the Similipal. Similipal Tiger Reserve which was located in northern part of Odisha. Mayurbanj district. Simlipal derives its name from a term called Simul. Simul means it's a silk cotton tree and it is a national park and tiger reserve spread over around 2750 square kilometer and has some beautiful waterfalls like Joranda and Barehipani. The park is surrounded by high plateaus and hills. The highest peak the twin peaks which is known as Kariburu and Mehashini. Remember the prominent tribal communities like Gondas, Kadia, Santhalas all are living in this particular region. Sol is the dominant tree species. Remember why this article came into the uh, newspaper today. Melanistic tiger dives in Similipal tiger research. Melanistic means more black appearance in the body which is known as melanistic. So that tiger dies here. That is the reason behind this particular article came into the news. The next important article of the day, which is related to the importance of constitutional punctuality. As I mentioned earlier, many times in the newspaper discussion regarding the powers of governor related to the bills passed by the state legislative assembly you know about recent days there is a lot of issues happening in terms of providing the assent to the bills particularly tamil nadu assembly passed a resolution to set up a time limit for giving the assent the bill passed by the assemblies respectively so in this particular article even they are discussed about the Telangana state filled a writ petition in the Supreme Court regarding the same issue. Around 13 bills passed by Tamil Nadu Assembly was not given assent by the governor. In this particular article from the colonial time period and as, to, as per the constitution to assembly and after the independence related to the powers of discretionary and what exactly the Supreme Court and the president is supposed to intervene and even the parliament is supposed to take a look in terms of the powers of the governor. To so read this article which gives you the complete idea related to the time bound of the assent given by the governors for the bill passed by the legislative assembly. And also article 200 of the constitution speaks about the importance of the bills that is about veto power and also to keep the bill and to send it back for the recommendation and also hold it for the president's assent. So just go through the article and you will get to know about the complete idea related to the governor power in terms of bill passed by the state legislative assembly. And the death of another uh, Nehruvian idea, it's the next article. National Science Day was observed in the month of February 28th. There was an official press release came from the DST, Department of Science and Technology, cryptically announced the death of Vigyan Prasar, an autonomous body under its purview. So exactly the Niti Aayog doing some kind of rationalist functioning in terms of autonomous societies function under 
various wings of the union government. So this is particularly regarding the death of Vigyan Prasar. What is this Vigyan Prasar? Engage with signs of Vigyan Prasar is one of the initiative to build interest and create a community of practice with students, teachers and scientists connecting the high school students to higher education institutions. The Vigyan Vigyan Prasar is to serve India's science popularization agenda to create a scientific temper among the people of our country. So this particular ideology was dead and what exact step taken by the government in terms of providing more scientific temper. So just go through this article you will get to know about the importance. For example, other initiatives by the DST to promote gender party in STEM. See, women scientist scheme, consolidation of university research, artificial intelligence labs, and you know, uh, gender advancement for transforming institutions, knowledge involvement in research advancement through nurturing, okay, nurturing. So, all these kind of uh, schemes were initiated by the Department of Science and Technology to create the scientific temper among the people of India. So just go through this article, you'll get to know about what exactly the original mandate of the Vigyan Praza and also how we can go ahead with the future. The next important article which is related to the sedition law. So consultations on sedition law are in final stage. The government in the Supreme Court said it had initiated the process of re-examination of section 124A sedition of IPC which is in the final stage. So why this sedition law? 17th century England particularly England and the European nations the lawmakers believed that only good opinions of the government should survive as bad opinions were determinantal to the government and monarchy. If any press or the press person speak about the government it is not acceptable. Only the favored statesmen can be released. So the law was originally drafted in the year of 1837 by Thomas McAloy, the British historian politician, but was inexplicable omitted when the IPZ was enacted in the year of 1860. So section 124A was inserted in the year of 1870. So just it's a colonial act. Right, so James Stephen, when it felt the need for a specific section to deal with the offense. So today, the sedition is crime under section 124A of the IPC. So what exactly the IPC is telling, Indian Penal Code, uh, it defines the sedition as an offense committed when any person by words, either spoken or written, or by signs, or by visible representation or otherwise, brings or attempts to bring into hatred or contempt or excites or attempts to excite the disaffection towards the government established by law in India. This is what the particular provision as per the article in the constitution. It's a non bailable offense. Punishment under section 124A range from imprisonment up to three years to a lifetime to which a fine may be added. A person charged under this law is barred from a government job. They have to live without their passport and must appear in court at all times as and when required. So the content here is about the re-examination of this particular act. Just go through this, then you'll get an idea about the importance. And government bans 14 apps in German Kashmir sites used by terror groups. So the government has uh, instructed service providers to ban 14 applications in Jammu and Kashmir because it is all about uh, to curbing the terror groups because they used to send kind of messages to them in terms of creating the chaos in the region of Jammu and Kashmir. Members of Maiti community to file contempt proceedings against panel. Some members who belong to the Maiti community in Manipur which are seeking the scheduled tribe status for decades. 
have now said that they intend to file contempt proceedings against the Hill Areas Committee of the Manipur Assembly, which recently passed a resolution opposing their inclusion. The context is simple. Maiti community in Manipur, they just wanted them to be inserted in the scheduled tribe. Last 10 years, they are fighting for that. So they like intend to file a contempt proceedings against the committee. Because the Manipur Assembly recently passed a resolution opposing the Maiti community inclusion in the scheduled tribe. So in this particular article, we need to understand about the community. Maiti also spelt Miti or Maite also called Manipuri, dominant population of Manipur in northeast of India. They are predominantly Vaishnavite Hindus. They are divided into clans, the members which do not intermarry. An interesting aspect of village socio-economic organization in Maiti society is Marup system, literally means friendship association. They speak a tibeto burman language. They differ culturally from surrounding hill tribes by following the Hindu customs. The rice cultivation on irrigated field on the basis of their economy. Uh, they are keen horse breeders and polo is a national game. Field hockey, boat races, theatrical performances and dancing well known throughout India as the Manipuri style or other pastimes. So these are all the major information that you need to gather regarding the Maiti community. Next important article that is related to the maritime excise. Inaugural Asian Indian Maritime Excise in South China Sea from today. So, in a step further in expanding India Asian Association of Southeast Nations Military Cooperation, the maiden maritime excise name called AIM. That is Asian India Maritime Excise set to begin today with war games in South China Sea. Indian naval ship Satpura, INS Delhi have reached to participate or participating in the inaugural. Day. So this is about the maritime excise. In separate development. Defense Ministry arrived the Maldives a three-day visit while the Air Force, Air Chief as well as four-day visit to Sri Lanka. So in this particular article you need to understand about the maritime excise related to India as well as the Asian countries. Just go through this then you will get an idea about what exactly they are talking about. So because this will provide an opportunity for Indian Navy and Asian navies to work together closely and conduct a seamless operation in maritime domain. This particular uh, edition was held in the year of 1997, has since been expanding year on the year. There are about 50 delegations this year, it has been learnt. So just go through this. Here, uh, the Japan to train 1000 Indian engineers for bullet train project. As many as 1000 Indian engineers will be trained by Japanese experts before starting work on the high speed trail track system for the Mumbai Ahmedabad high speed rail corridor. It is about the bullet train being uh, built between Mumbai and Ahmedabad will use the ballastless slab track system. For that purpose, Japanese are giving training to 1000 Indian engineers for the project. So just go through this article as well so that you'll get an idea about what exactly it is. The last article of the day that we are going to discuss about Chinese state-owned firm to build port complex in Sri Lanka. So a Chinese state-owned firm Sairan uh, yesterday, it planned to take its investment in Sri Lanka to 2 billion by building a major logistics hub. Remember, China is always focusing to build some ports in Sri Lanka as well. One thing we need to understand here, why is China's presence in Sri Lanka a concern for India? Remember, China is the largest bilateral creditor to Sri Lanka. It loans to Sri Lanka public sector amount to 15% of the central government external debt. Sri Lanka heavily relies on the Chinese credit to address its foreign debt burden. 
So China invested about 12 billion US dollar in Sri Lanka infrastructure project between 2006 to 2009. Just imagine about the contribution in terms of their development. So Sri Lanka has decided to establish a SEZ that is Special Economic Zone around the Colombo port city and a new economic commission to be funded by China. That is a major concern because other South Asian nations like Bangladesh, Nepal and the Maldives have also been turning to China's to finance large scale infrastructure projects. But it is directly threatening our country's security as well. So just keep all this factor in mind in this, in this particular topic. And yes, the April GST revenue to record 1.8 lakh crore. So India's gross GST revenue hit a record high in April at 1,87,035 crore. That is 12 percentage higher than the same month last year. Just go through all this article of the day and read the important points and make a note of it for your preparation. Stay tuned. See you tomorrow. Thank you.